In this video, I want to show you how you can use smart narratives to explain your reports and insights for you using natural language. We're going to talk about what it is, why it's useful, and some of the practical applications that you can do it in your reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the Smart Narratives feature in Power BI is a feature that, as I said, lets you summarize your insights and reports and visuals using natural language. This doesn't stop you from writing your own narratives in a text box. You can just create one and just start typing. But the benefit of the smart narratives is ability to be dynamic. So the narratives and the, the insights change as you cross filter or cross highlights in your report page. So here we are in my uh, reports demo that I've created. It's a very simple report with just a few of the visuals here that I've already added. So it's a bunch of visuals that we use to analyze product sales across different regions um, and across multiple products. So as you can see here, we can start analyzing it by understanding, for example, which countries sold the most beverages that contributed to this highest selling product category. And as I click that, it shows us which countries sold the most, as well as the average unit price per country for beverages. Now, by itself, it tells us a lot in terms of story, but in terms of narratives, you it might be useful for your users to be able to read something in sort of natural language. So you can start writing your analysis in a text box like this. Norway had the highest unit price for beverages. I can spell. But the problem with this is that as you make changes to or, or, or filter different parts of your report, this stays static. So we don't want it to be static. So the smart narratives allows us or allows this to change based on the selections that you make in your report. The easiest way that you can start implementing smart narratives within your Power BI reports is by simply adding it on the page level. So to add a page level smart narrative, is you simply just do it here from the top ribbon. So if you expand the visual gallery, you will have this option smart narratives under the AI visuals. If you click that, what it will do is it will try to analyze everything, all the visuals that you have in this page and summarize it in natural language. So this narrative, for example, tells us which type of product category sold the most and which one had the highest unit price across all of our different categories. What is the range of price and the beverages? So the analysis on the beverages that we've just highlighted earlier, what, how much does that account for the total units sold that we've had in this page? So all in all, this insight is very useful and very easy to digest. But what is most powerful about this thing is that as you select different parts of this, so for example, we want to just analyze Norway. As you make those changes, the analysis also changes in this smart narrative. This means that no matter how your users slice and dice the data, the narratives change, giving them infinite value in understanding what they're looking at. So that's a pretty simple and fast implementation of smart narratives. You can also add smart narratives if you wanted to analyze only one type of visual within your page. So instead of a page level smart narratives here, let's just delete this one. And let's say we just want to always analyze the average unit price by country. What we can do is convert this into a smart narrative. So if you copy and paste like this, and then we'll just simply convert this into a smart narrative. So it's a little bit different than before because it has less data points to work with. But as you can see, the narratives are always focused on analyzing the average uh, unit price of by country. So as I make selections like, let's say, for example, beverages, it doesn't try to cross analyze against other other dimensions. It just focuses on the average unit price by country. So this is one of the more easier ways for you to implement smart narratives. If you wanted to utilize smart narratives, but don't really like the fact that it takes a lot of of space in your report page, you can also implement it as a tooltip within your visuals. So if I go to this average unit price by country, for example, I'm just going to disable the cross highlighting feature here. And if we go to its format settings, so under view, I'm just going to turn on the format pane right here. Under properties, header icons, under icons, you will see that there's an option for you here to toggle smart narratives. So when we 
click that, you'll see that it adds this new icon on the top right of the visual as we have it selected. And clicking that will generate a smart narrative that analyzes this specific visual for you. Just one note with the smart narratives on tooltips is that it doesn't seem to be dynamic. But at the moment, it's showing us the same uh, analysis that we have at the top there. But as I make changes to the cross highlighting here, where Norway and all of these values have changed, this seems to not. So it stays as it was when you first generated it. So just be aware of that tiny difference if you want to use smart narratives on tooltips. Lastly, let me show you how you can utilize and leverage the smart narratives feature to recreate and create your own custom dynamic narratives if you wanted to. So if you've noticed already when we created these smart narratives visual, they are not really smart narratives visual in a sense like the, the bar charts or the pie charts are. They are essentially just a text box. So as you can see, I can type other static things here. But obviously, the smart narratives makes all of these statements dynamic for you, which means you don't need to really worry about them. And within text boxes, you can add dynamic values by clicking this button, dynamic value. And this is the same thing that smart narratives use to generate all of these statements. So the dynamic values in the text boxes looks something like this. So it lets you ask your data in natural language what you want it to return. So if I, for example, just type today's date, it will just give me the date of the current context. It depends on what I want. So it didn't recognize today's date. Um, but let's say if I type this year, okay, maybe that's not. Um, so if we say um, highest unit price, it will give us some sort of results. And what it will do if I hit save, I'm just going to name it highest unit price right here is it will create a dynamic element for us, which we can then reuse if we wanted to. So if we click the dynamic value again under, uh, sorry, under review, you will see that this new dynamic element that you've just created, you can hit plus and it will let you kind of reuse that in your text. So you can say the highest unit price is 263 pounds and five pence. So because it's dynamic, that means that as you make selection, that also changes based on your selections that you've made. Now, there's an underline here, the blue line, which means that it's a dynamic element. So as you can notice, the smart narrative has also utilized the same thing, which is the underscore here on the Poland and the average unit price here on the actual value. Now, when you click on them, it will show you what what the smart narratives generated for that, as well as the name of that dynamic value, which is really important. Now, if you wanted to reuse these values, so let's say you wanted to get the highest selling the, the country with the highest average unit price for products, Norway, for example, we know that the name of this is V2. So we can just reuse that and create our own message. So let's say the, um, the most expensive country is uh, the statement doesn't make sense, but I'm just going to show you how to reuse it within and using your own sentences. So from here, we want a dynamic element. So this should show the country with the highest average unit price. So if you click review, you won't find it here unless you toggle show auto generated values. So we know that it's V2 because we just saw it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click insert value. And there we go. So as you can see, now it's given us Norway, which is the same value that we are using here in the smart narratives. So that means we've basically just reused what smart narratives has generated for us. And basically we can create our own sentences and narratives based on that without having to try to understand the type of questions that you should ask. Since it's already created it for us, we might as well just reuse it, right? Just for you to note, if you are thinking of uh, utilizing smart narratives, there are a few limitations when it comes to using it. So for example, if you wanting to publish your report to the web, which is making the reports available to public, this feature won't work. There are other limitations like that, like not being able to use it with direct query. If you want to know more about all of those limitations, 
I'll leave a link to the full blog post about smart narratives and how you can use it in the description box below. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to implement smart narratives to explain your insights in natural language. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.